Hey there everybody and welcome back! For those of you that are looking to learn more about Movement.so or maybe you've never heard of it and you're looking to build some kind of a brand and you want to do this with a mobile or web app builder but you don't want to know any coding, then stay tuned. I'm going to go into detail in this video and yes, they do have a free tier for this platform. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, when it comes to this platform, a couple of things to note. I do have a more high-level overview video. I'll put a link in the description, which covers pricing and basically just how I got to this screen, doing the sign up, covering the basic features. Today, we're going in a really just a little bit more detail and just gonna walk you through a couple of things. So let's just jump straight in. So we have our app right here. We have just this single text box. We're gonna delete everything. So we just wanna start from scratch. So we're going to take all of these pages, we're going to remove them from navigation. And you'll see the U is going to be there by default. So right now, all we have is home and U, which is basically the my account page. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build out the home page. So we can start with this add block option. And then most people are going to start with some kind of a text component, probably something like a large heading. So we'll put this block here, we'll say welcome. And then we have some options here, we'll center that. Now, one thing to note, when we go to save and publish, if we preview this, you'll see welcome appears at the top of the screen. So we're not gonna see this portion right here. And if you go to share, and for example, if we click copy link, and we paste it in our new tab, You'll see when we're on this page here, this is what it's going to look like as well. So <clears throat> we're not going to see this top portion. That's basically my understanding, essentially this part right here. All right, so now we're going to jump in and change some things up a bit. So let's go to add another block and then let's go through. So we probably want to do something like content if we wanted to make this, for example, a fitness app. So we can click this block here and you'll see we have a couple of options. So we have a dynamic content type, or we can just click add content here and pull from the various options that we have. So we have a couple of just basic options here. So let's do something like if we were to say, okay, we want, <clears throat> let's just say to do legs and abs, or maybe we have a specific body part that we want to do. So you'll see we have curls, we have lunges. So let's try to do, let's throw in some leg activities and see if we can find any others. So we'll add these and we'll just basically make this the leg workout section. So we have one section here. You'll see that we have this scrolling horizontally and you can change the content right here. So if we wanted it to be a vertical scroll, first horizontal, we could do flat or raised. I personally prefer raised. And then again, you can do horizontal or vertical here. I prefer vertical, I just like the appearance of it. And then you can adjust some additional things here. But now we're gonna go and add another block. So we have that content set up. And again, if you're interested, when you click on the content, you do have that option for that dynamic content. So you can always go to your collections here. If you want, you can create a collection and you can turn it into a content library and go through all of those options. And then you also have your libraries and you'll see we have the fitter exercise library. We have the meal library. So there's a ton of content built in already that you can use. But if we wanted to go with something a little bit different, then we could decide, okay, let's go ahead and grab, maybe you wanna upload just a standard image. We'll click the image. And if we decide we wanna move it, we can drag it up with this little option here, this little move icon. So for access, you'll see we have our access settings. We have our schedule options and quite a few different options here. But if we're just clicking on the icon, here we have all of the other things that we need to go over. So if we want to replace the image, you'll see you have the option to go through the fitter library of options or things that are already here. 
or we can go to Unsplash and see what options we have. So we have a couple that are already pulled up, so let's just pull up this nutrition, and let's just grab the first image that appears. So you'll see it will add this picture in, so that's going to appear right here. And then we can do video and audio if you're interested. But let's just keep going. So we have welcome, and then we have our block with our pictures. And then if we decided, you know what, it doesn't make sense just to have this here. We're going to add in a text block above it with a medium heading. And we'll just make this here our leg workouts. Obviously, this is probably not how you would want your app to look, but we are just building something super basic. Now, we do have a video option here, so you can go through the various video options if you're interested. You can also add in some audio if you wanted to have like a playlist or something for people while they're doing their workout. So they could scroll through their workouts and then play the audio as well. You also have an embed option here. So most of these currently are going to be fitness related. So for example, macro calculator, one rep max, BMI, but we do have some other options like media. So you could do Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, etc. So if you want to add them, you can just click the block and you'll see it pops up right here and you have all of your options. Now we're going to go through, we don't really need any icons. If you want to add feeds, you can, but I would recommend if you're interested in the pro option, you can check out the affiliate link in the description. So basically it's going to take you to codelessfix.com. And if you go to about us affiliate links, you'll see we have a movement affiliate link here. You can sign up using that link and I will get a portion of the revenue from that but it will be an option for you to essentially sign up for the pro option if you're interested. So you can implement that group chat. Now we do also have this PDF download option. So if you wanted to create a more comprehensive app and let's just say you wanted to provide some kind of a PDF document for people to set, just to learn about whatever it is that your platform does. So you could have maybe a case study, a flyer about the benefits of exercise. It doesn't even have to be exercise. It could really be anything that you want it to be. So again, you have those components. And if you wanted to add in a map, you could as well. And then lastly, we have this elements section. So you can add in whatever you want to add here. So for example, a comment section is something a lot of people probably would want to implement. So let's just say that this is our home page and we're done with this. Now, if we decide to, we can go through and maybe we want to create something new. So if we want to create a new page, let's go through the library and see what we would want to add. So maybe we want a blog. We'll just click use this template and we'll call it blog. This is a great way to keep your users engaged and have fresh dynamic content. So we'll add this page and you'll see it's showing up right here. And then we can click new and add more. And you'll see that this is showing in this section and we can drag it into the sidebar navigation. The idea with this sidebar, what we'll do is we'll click right here and you'll see the navigation. So let's preview and you'll see we have home and you. So the idea with this sidebar nav, you'll, when you hover over this, you'll see they're available in your app, but don't appear in the main navigation. So if you want, if you click and drag this to here, if we click preview, you'll see that it's not really making any changes. So you have abilities to kind of manage this main navigation and then you'll see again that sidebar. So you have all of your app pages. You could start, let's say you wanna build out a feed and engagement. So if we want to build out and use this template and we'll call it feed. And then you'll see that we have other additional pages that are added. So these options right here are what are going to appear when you're actually doing the preview. So for example, we're on the community feed. And then if we decided we want to view this as an actual application, we'll copy the link just so that we can 
see everything in more detail. So you'll see we have our community feed. If we click this back button, we go to the home screen. And then you'll see we have all of these things that we've already added. So we have our workouts right here. We have the ability to add in a comment. So if we were to post this, you'll see the comments are being posted right there. You'll have your ebook downloads. So if you wanted to, you can download that. I think the comment portion is probably going to be something that people enjoy the most because you have the ability to, for example, reply right here. And I could say, hey, and you can reply to those and have what looks almost like a social media style. And then you'll see that those are applying right here in or they're appearing right here. You may want to give this its own page, but then you can go to the you section. You can see my activity my saved, my content, my schedule, account details, and then you can go back home. Now, let's drag this here, and then we'll see if this actually makes any changes. So now when we refresh this page, we have our feed, and then if we decided we wanna add our blog, so we would drag this up, and then when we refresh our page, you'll see we now have blog and feed. So all of that is updating pretty quickly within the application. And then if you want, you can add in additional built-in pages. So you'll see we have these already added. You can click on them to see what they look like in this mobile preview and scan a preview on your device. But if we were to go to just figuring out, okay, what type of content do we want to add? you have a ton of different options. So to give you kind of a high level overview of some of the things that you could think about for this application, you'll see a lot of content around fitness, especially with all of these workouts and um, fitness related items. Now, what I wanted to cover with this video is mainly just showing you, you do have the option on how you can brand your own app and icon. So for example, we can go to name an icon and you can name it and choose your icon here. And then you have the flexibility of laying out your content so that some things can be free or paid. So you have an access option to define how access users get access to basically define how they get access to the app. So only logged in users or requires purchase. And then there's a post sign up option that you can see to trigger certain things. We have our navigation bar, we have our login screen, so you can set up what that login screen looks like. You have the ability to edit your splash screen, your sharing options, there's the legal option here. And then for pro, you can set up your Google Analytics options. And here you can link terms and conditions and the privacy policy. Now they do also have an integrated workout builder and you can create tons of different apps like the various fitness apps that are already out there using that or the integrated form builder so that you can allow users to do check-ins, collect progress pictures, things of that nature. So basically, if we just go back to our create tab, go back to our application, and we go to our home page, when you go through, you have tons of different options over here. So you'll see you can add your tags, you can add different actions, update the schedule, and then you can set up access for pages. So your pages, you can set them to be public, require login, be private for specific users, or require purchase, which is a really unique thing about this app. You can give everyone a free page like this home page here. And then if you decided, you know what, I want everyone to have access to the home page. So we'll just set this to public and save. But when we go to the blog, I want the access to this to require a purchase. And then you'll see, can users browse? We don't want them to browse at all. And then you can add your product that they would need to purchase and then update the rules here. And that's all that there is to it. So when you save and publish, when users go, if we were to refresh the page, if users were to go to the blog, they would then be required to purchase whatever that item is that you have set on that page. This way, if you want to set a page to be premium content, for example, 
you have the option to go over to your media section. You can upload your various options. So we have forms here that I mentioned previously. We have program feedback. You could have all of these forms provided to the users to provide feedback on you, your product, etc. You also have the ability to add in tons of additional bits of content. So we already added this block here but you have the ability to change this content as frequently as you want. So you can have your own collections or your own content. And if you wanted, for example, to mix things up a bit and add some of these and click, you can create an article if you want. And when we close this, you'll see how it's updating. So when we click save and publish, what makes this a really cool platform is your ability to go back to the homepage and as you're scrolling through, now you can see all of the updated content is regularly being added to this application. So you'll see here we have these articles that we just added. When you select them, you have that article. They can bookmark it, schedule, they have options to share. So there's a lot of really cool and unique features that are built into this application builder that you can utilize that you don't need to put a ton of effort. As you can see, obviously there are some changes that I would need to make to this application, but in 10 to 15 minutes, you can already build a really attractive looking site that has tons of different options, content, custom forums, ability, or um, something similar to a social element ability to download things. You can share music playlist, have a blog about you page, and all of the work is already done for you just by adding in these elements. So I hope that was helpful in giving you a little bit more detail. I know that this video was a little, um, a little all over the place in that I was just covering different features and bouncing back and forth, but I hope it gives you a couple of ideas on how you can use this platform, not only to build a fitness app, but just an app that can kind of help you to build a brand and that the fact that they have a free tier is also incredibly helpful. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.